Hello lovely people, welcome to Vap Fashion's YouTube channel. Thank you for clicking on this video. So in today's video, we're going to be learning how to make this bustier top with an underboss corset. And the underboss corset part has several panels. As you can see how it opens up and it's giving the flared effect. And it also has a yoke. I hope this is what you're interested in learning. Kindly stay tuned while we get right into the tutorial. And if you're yet to subscribe to my channel, please kindly hit on the subscribe button to subscribe. Thank you. The measurements we'll be using. We have our shoulder measurement, which is 18 inches, bust 38, on the bust is 33, waist is 34. We need our upper hip line. Remember that this is a blouse and it will be stopping at the upper hip line, which is also 38. Then the half length of this person is 18.5 inches. Nipple to nipple is 7 inches. Shoulder to nipple point is 11 inches. Shoulder to under bust is 15 inches. And then shoulder to the end of the blouse, that's the full length of the blouse, is 26 inches. So remember I said the half length here. This half length that I have here is 18 inches. That's the front half length. So the back half length is 16.5 inches. That's for the back half length. Remember our front and back are not the same because we have our bust in front. So let's get started. I'm going to be drawing our vertical lines and then I'll show us what to do. I've gone ahead to mark this is my front and this is the back. So I already I went ahead to mark three inches. Can you see? And then eight inches. Then I came down by one inch to create my shoulder slant. The shoulder measurement of my client is 18 inches. So half of 18 is nine inches. So can you see? So can you see that the shoulder slant extended this way? So you can see how it comes down here. This is about one inch and one eighth of an inch. So and then I went ahead to draw mark my armhole measurement or the armhole measurement. The armhole of my client is 7.8. Then I got the midpoint and came in by three quarter of an inch. So, and then I have my neckline of three inches. So first I have the bust line here. The bust line is at 11 inches. The bust, the under bust point is at 13 inches. I'm sorry, 15 inches. The half length is that. That's the waistline, which is 18 inches. And then the full length of this blouse is 26 inches. So I also did the same thing for the back. I went ahead to mark half of the shoulder measurement. And you can see my 8 inches point here. I came down by 1 inch and I connected it here. So I have my shoulder slant. I extended it this way. So, and then you can see the armhole measurement. I got down by the armhole measurement and I got the midpoint and went in by half of an inch. And then you can see I curved it. So here we have our chest line at the back. We have our waistline and then the full length. You will notice that the front is longer than the back. That's a result of this two inches difference that I have. So automatically the blouse length in front is 26 inches and the blouse length at the back is 24 inches. So you see my waistline here is 18.5 and at the back here is 16.5. Do we get that? I see the blouse length here. So now we'll go ahead to adjust it into our underboard corset. Having done all this. So this is my back piece. I'll go ahead and add my zip allowance when we get to that point. So here now, on the waistline, I'm going to enter half of the nipple to nipple measurement. Nipple to nipple of my client is 7 inches. So half of it is 3.5. So here's our 3.5. I also mark the 3.5 on the bust line. Mark it on the underboss line and then i'll also bring it down to the full length so i've marked my 3.5 inches so i'll go ahead and straighten out my line can you see that so on the waistline i'm going to be doing my dart intake i'll mark half inch on this side and then half inch on this side i'll come down from the bust point like this by one inch and then I'll connect it like this. So 
So on the full length here, I will go up by two inches and then also connect my dart leg. So here now I have my front dart. So I'll go ahead and enter quarter of the bust measurement, which is 9.5. So here is my 9.5. I'll come to the waistline. Quarter of the waist measurement is 8.5 inches. So here is my 8.5. So remember, I have a dart intake of one inch here. So I'll replace back that one inch. And then quarter of the hip measurement is the same 9.5. Go ahead and connect it like this. Can okay, you see? So this is what I have here now. So I'll come here and mark the bust that, which is that two inches difference. So from the bust point line, I'll come down by two inches. And then I will slant it this way. So now this is our bust that. By the time we close it, it will allow our front and back match up. So now, Having done this, now we want to tighten the underboss because we are making an underboss corset. So the underboss measurement we are working with is 33 inches. So 33 divided by 4 is 8 and quarter. So here's our 8 and quarter here. So can you see what do we have left from this measurement? I see we have about one and quarter inch. So we're going to use that one and quarter inch to tighten our underboss. This way you have an idea of what you are tightening. You don't just decide and say, I want to use one inch, I want to use quarter inch. So now you should know when to, once this is basically the difference between your bust and the underboss because this line is connecting this way. So that's the difference between the bust and the underboss. So we'll come here. We have one and quarter inch. So at the center front, we take less than what we take from the side. So now since we have one and quarter inch, I will decide to place quarter inch or let's say half inch on this side. You see that? So if I place half inch on this side, I am left with three quarter of an inch. So take note that I placed it after the dart leg. So we'll come here to this side now and place the remaining three quarter of an inch. Do we understand? So these are three quarter of an inch. So now I'm going to connect this dart leg to this point now. Ruler, can you see what I'm doing? So we bring it in like this, and then also bring it like this. So now we have tightened our underboss. So we want to connect to the boss point. So from this boss point, I'll come down by half of an inch. And you see, remember that when I was connecting my dart, I came down by one inch. So here now I'm connect, I'm coming down by half of an inch to create the first curve. So we'll use it to this half inch. So I'll place my curve like this. Can you see this is a half inch here? I'll connect it like this. You see that? So I'll curve it. Just know how to place your curve correctly. You walk around it so that the points meet. So here, I'll come here now and place my curve ruler like this. Can you see? We're trying to meet this half inch here. So I'll curve it. I'll curve it to meet this point. So you can see now, I've done my dart intake for the underboss. Of course, we have to tighten the overboss. So now, a standard to get your overbust point is this. The distance from the bust point to the underbust gives you the distance to your overbust. It's just natural. But if you understand here, we're going up by the that's by the distance we have here, and it is four inch back our four inches here. So. Okay, so now we have our upper bust line, which is upper, okay? So these are our bust line. So we'll come here to the upper bust, 
and then we'll bring the same nipple to nipple measurement which is 3.5 so i haven't marked my 3.5 here i'm just going to go ahead and draw my yoke so that we know where we are working with so here from this point here from the armhole here i'll come down by 5.5 inches then from the center front here i'll come down by 8 inches this is how deep i want the yoke to be I'm just going to place my curl from here. Can you see that? I'll curve it to meet this point. So this part is going to be my yoke. So now you can see that this is our overboss point. So we'll tighten up to this line here. So now we'll go ahead and extend this line like this. Can you see that? So we have extended it up to this point. So I'm going to take half of an inch on this side and then half of an inch on the other side. So you want to use the part of your ruler that is not too curvy. Can you see what I'm doing? And then just like I came down by half of an inch from the bottom point here, I went up by half of an inch. So I'm going to curve it this way now. So you want to use the part of your ruler that is not so curvy and then I'll connect it like this. So you can see, so I'll tighten my over bust here. I see, I've also tightened the under bust here. So now this is what we're going to be doing. Remember that I'm going to be attaching this yoke to this over bust. If I cut out this that, I'm going to have a shortage because remember that this yoke will be sewn to this part whatever is your dart intake here please come here and return it back so you are just tightening it to give it the shape you don't want to reduce your measurement so come back here and return that one inch so having returned that one inch you can see that this is the part i'm working with here so i'm just going to extend this line like this so now this is now my new armhole because by the time I cut out this, that this is what I'll be losing. So I'm going to come back here and replace it. So we're not touching our yoke because the yoke is intact. Okay. So having done this, then you can go ahead and add your sewing allowance if you want to add sewing allowance to the pattern. But before we do that, I'm going to go ahead and close my dart and then add my sewing allowance to this pattern piece we have not done the back piece yet so let's cut out the front piece and then show us how to add our sewing allowance here so i'm going to cut the shoulder so remember that we're making an underbust corset bustier so I'm going to come here now. This is our underboss line. I'm going to highlight this line. Let's say this point. So this line is going, this part is going to be different from this side. So now we'll continue. Close our boss that we have to open the waist that for us to be able to close the boss that. So we'll go ahead and continue cutting. Now to open our waist that. Can you see? We'll be cutting out this part like this, and then we'll come back and cut it out like this. So we have cut out our ways that. So we haven't cut out our waist that so you can see now that we can now close the boss that this is the boss line so to close the boss that you pick it like this and then place it over like this when you place it over like this you can see that this line now that bust line that that line has gone to meet the boss line so it has covered up 
So we we'll use our masking tape to tape it down. And we can see now. You can see that my dart leg has shifted. So all we need to do now is to blend up that line. Our bust that. So we'll now blend up this line to match up with the bust line here. Can you see that? So I've done that. Then we can now go ahead and add a sewing allowance. We want to use a sewing allowance here. What I have left here. This is about one and three quarter. I can work with one and three quarter. So here, I'll still mark the same one and three quarter. You can see that shift. So that is why I have the same one and three quarter there. Once you close your boss that, it will shift. So that's why you need to always have excess here so that you can make it up. So here, I'll still mark the same one and three quarter. Usually I use two inches. So if I see that my allowance is less with quarter inch. So I use one and three quarter. So we'll go ahead and mark it this way. So you can see. So this is allowance. So here's our swing allowance. So now we'll go ahead and cut out the armhole. I won't cut it out like this. So now I'll come out here to cut the upper dart. So here, you see? So this is what we have here. So you want to check and see, are they matching up? You want to make sure that you threw it. And you see where the line is? So placing it this way, are they matching up? The smaller, this center piece is shorter. So I'll just place a small piece of fabric on that so that I can throw it and make sure that they are equal because I'll be joining them together. So adding this piece of paper here, so I can now blend up this mark so that we can, you can see it's less than with like quarter of an inch, a little less than quarter inch. This is because there's a curve. You can see that this is not straight. It's going down this way. So I want to make sure that they are equal. So I'll place my curve ruler like this. You see? So it's just really, really small. So I'm just going to blend up this line like this. So now when I place them together, you can see that they are now equal, right? So having done that now, we have our two front pieces. And this is our yoke. So remember, can you see that if I had not added back that dart, that up, you can see that they wouldn't have been equal. There would have been a big shortage, which will make this um, bustier not to balance. So with that being said, now we want to cut out. Remember that we said the bustier is going to be an underbust corset. So we'll come here and cut at the underbust line. And then here at the underbust line. Now we have our front pieces. We have our yoke and we have our bustier. So remember that the style we are making, it's an underboss cutter. So on this part, you notice that there's this opening around the down part. So for me to achieve that opening, I'm going to place my pieces this way. These are the down parts that I'm going to be using to form the underboss. So I'm going to tape it down like this. I haven't taped the down part like this. You can see that here is my sewing allowance. So now this is what we're going to do. I'm going to be dividing this into three. So the center front, the center front here is going to be 1.5 inches. 1.5 inches. And then 1.5 inches. So, from this 1.5 inches, I'll check what do I have left. I have 6 inches left. So, I'm going to divide these 6 inches into 2. So, now this is what we're trying to achieve. 
1.5 inches this will be cut on fold and that will be 3 inches you can see that this is 3 inches this will not be cut on fold we'll need two pieces and we'll need two pieces for the other side so at the end of the day this center piece will be 3 inches when I cut it opened so I'm going to just down like this and then I will come here to this point also and draw my line straight down like this so you can see that this is my sewing allowance so automatically you can see that our dart has been closed so I'm going to cut this open into three pieces So, in order not to make any mistake, I'm going to label this F1, F2, F3. So, and then I'll label this part. I will just draw this arrow to indicate that this is up. This is up. And then this is up. So, there's no need to draw any arrow down. It is already obvious. So, since these are up. So this is it. So now when we place on our fabric to cut, I'll be opening it from the waistline. You can see the lines here. I'll be opening from the waistline. So we'll go ahead and treat our back first and then we'll go ahead and cut out our fabrics. Now to treat our back, you can see we only have our waistline here, the full length and then the chest line. So I'm going to draw my dart intake here. So nipple to nipple of my client is 3.5 inches. So here is my 3.5 inches. I'll bring the same 3.5 inches to this point. So I'll take it all the way to this point like this. And then I'll go ahead and mark half inch on the left and half inch on the right. And Unlike the front, I came down by one inch for the back. I'll be stopping at the chest line. So, then, just like the front, we came up by two inches to end our dart. So, I'll come here and mark my two inches and then zerize my dart at that point. So now we have done our back dart intake. So I'll go ahead and enter the measurement. Quarter of the bust measurement is 9.5. Quarter of the waist measurement is 8.5 plus 1 inch for our dart. We'll come here and enter our dart. Then quarter of the upper hip measurement is 9.5. So I'll go ahead and connect my lines like this. So you can see it's basically a straight line. But by the time we close our dart, that human shape will come out here. So now, having taken our dart, we're going to come here to the center back and take out our zipper bulge. So now, at this point here, at this waistline here, I will go in by half of an inch. Can you see that? So having gone in by half of an inch, I'm going to slant this line up to the neckline here. So you can see it's basically looking like a dart. So I'm going to also slant it to one inch above the hip line. You see? So we're going to be cutting out this part. But remember that I'm going to be attaching a zip. So now from this point, I'll go ahead and start marking my zip allowance. So I'm going to be using a zip allowance of one inch. So I'll mark one inch. One inch. You see? One inch. One inch. So you can see that the, the zip is the zip allowance is not straight, it's now curved because this is where our new C B line is, which is the center back. So this is to eliminate bulge at the back. So can you see?
So can you see that our zip allowance is not straight? So having done that, now we have done, we are through with our back here. Yeah? So to create the yoke, we will need to use a yoke for the back. So we'll come here and give it a fine shape. We'll come, let's come down from the neckline by 3.5 inches. So once we come down by 3.5 inches, I want the yoke at the back to be a triangular shape. So having come down by 3.5 inches, I'm just going to slant it this way. I'm marking it to this point. Can you see that? So you can see this is four inches. So this I'll be cutting out this side. And see that this is our yoke. So this part is our back yoke. So now this is the down part that we'll be working with. So we want to also cut out our dart and close it. Remember that we have an underbust that we're working with. And the same way that we're going to have these three panels at the front, we're going to also have three panels too at the back. So I'm going ahead to cut out my fabric. And see, I have my front yoke. And I also went ahead to cut lining. This net is what I'm using as the lining. It's a skin tone net. And then the main fabric is the lace fabric. So this is the front yoke here, and I have my bustier. So this is the center front. You can see this is the upper part with the sweetheart neckline. And this is the down part where it stops at the underbust. And you can see I have the side piece also. I also added half inch round. Remember that on our pattern, I added a sewing allowance of one and quarter inch. So this is it for the side front. And then I have my pieces. Remember that our center front was 1.5 inches. Can you see? This is 1.5 inches. So you can see that I cut on fold. So by cutting on fold, that will give me 3 inches. So plus my sewing allowance, that will be 4 inches here. And then I went ahead to open it up on the each side by 3, 3 inches. I want to achieve that sweep at the down part. So this is my center front. That's the down center front. So of course, this is the side that will be joined to the underboss, but this is the sweep area. So here I have my second piece, which is the second front piece, okay? F2, you can see. And I indicated my arrow because this is the part that will be joined to the underboss. You can see also that I opened it up by three, three inches. That's the essence of cutting your patterns. Let me put this aside so that I can easily show us. So you can see, I opened it up. I also fused my lining with paper stay. And, and then the main fabric, I fused it with hair stay. So I also indicated, this is the part I notched to indicate that this is the side that will be joined that will be joined to the front piece. Can you see? So I placed them right, wrong side, facing wrong side, and I notched on this side. So this side will be on, it will be sewn to this side, and this side will be sewn to this side. You don't want to interchange them because we have several pieces. So, and then this is F3. You can see that it has the allowance. This is our side that's the last of the front side. So, and you can also see that I notch this side to indicate that this side will be the side to be joined to this side. Can you see what we are going to have? It's already giving us that nice opening around here. So I'll be joining this side to this. And I also have two pieces for the main fabric and also two pieces for the lining. I fused the lining with paper stay and the main fabric with hasty. I did it for all of them. You have to do this so that it will give it that nice weight and it will open up well. So that's that for our front piece. So while we were drafting our back, immediately I showed us where our yoke will stop because this is our back yoke. And see, so my light went off. Sorry about that. So, but exactly the same thing I did for the front. I divided it into three equal parts. That's exactly what I did. So for the front, remember that the center front was 1.5. So which gave me three inches when it is opened. 
so the rest are three three inches because we didn't cut them on fold so that's dividing them that's dividing it into three equal parts if i have 1.5 on fold when i open i'll have three inches so the other ones were all three three inches so at the end of the day they were all equal so here i have b1 and you see so this is center back one so the this one now the bodies are the down part immediately after the yoke you have this unlike the front that we had the bustier unlike the front that will have our bustier first before the parts that will form the sweep but for the back this immediately after the yoke will have this part i hope we understand so here okay so here i have my cb center back i notched the part that will be joined to b2 so here is my b2 that will be joined to it this way i also have four pieces that's two for the right and two for the left and then also we have b3 can you see and this is the side with our sewing allowance this is the side with our sewing allowance so you can see i notch this side to indicate that i'll be joining them like this so i'm going to go ahead and join my pieces i'm going to join all my pieces together join b1 to b2 b10 b2 to b3 i'll do that for the both sides and then let me show us how to cut our pad because we have a bustier we're going to be padding this bustier and i have my center piece and the side piece i'll cut the side piece first so that i can use the side of my pad so all I need to do, remember that this is the underboss part and this is the upper part. All I'll be doing from this upper part, I will come down by one inch, by one inch from the upper part here. And the underboss part, I will go up by half inch. Half inch is for joining it to the down part. So that is why I'm going up by half inch. I don't want my part to go into the seam alone. It will be too thick around that side on the seam line. So... I'm going to place my pad this way. So let me mark the right side of my fabric so that we can see. So you can see this is where my padding will stop from here to here. So here we are. So I haven't done this. I'll notch at this point and then also notch at this point. So now, I'm already used to this, but let me just explain it to us. So here, the nipple to nipple of my client is 8 inches. Half of it is 4. So 4 plus 1 inch, that's what I'll be doing at the side here. So this is where my 5 inches is. So I'm just going to cut my part to this 5 inches here. Can you see? I'm just going to reshape this side so that everything is well arranged. So this is now going to be the side part. Can you see? So this is what we have at this side. So I'm going to cut two of these because we have two side pieces. And then I'll cut, show us how to cut the center piece. So I've cut my two pieces. My center piece also, I'm going to come down by one inch from the neckline here. And then I'll also go up by half inch from this point. So here we are. So I'm going to go ahead and cut out my part. Trace out this shape. Trace out the shape and stop here at the under bust. So you can see. to lift up this half inch I have here okay so I'll just fold it over like this and then straighten it out so you can see that you can see that at this point my part is showing here at the neckline I'm going to reshape this part so that it doesn't stick out on the neckline, not to make the neckline too thick. 
Can you see? I didn't cut this side. I only cut this from this side slanted here. I didn't touch this side so that it doesn't affect the length from the side. So I'm still maintaining my one inch below the neckline there. Okay. So here now at this down part, at the center front here, I will also go up by one inch because our bust is not straight under. So we want to have that shape that women have under their bust. So, so this part now, you can see this is the upper part here. And then this is the down part of my pad. So you can see all of them are stopping at the points I marked. So I'm going to just press it down. I'll use my I'll use my iron to press it down because this part has gone so, so that it will stick to the main fabric. And I'll do the same thing for the side pieces, then join them together and show us what to do. Now we are done with the cutting part. So in our next video, I'm going to be showing us how to stitch our pieces together to achieve this lovely blouse. So make sure to subscribe and also put on your notification bell so that you get notified once I post the video. Thank you for watching. See you in my next one. Bye.